good morning participants the people are adding okay let's start can you hear me clearly yes sir yes we can hear sir thank you thank you so much sir it's not a bit sir thank you so much okay let's restart sundar sir oh yes sir and then <coughs> so we are okay yeah, yeah, i am ready okay. Good morning, participants. Welcoming you all for the webinar on the topic of trends in software testing. I have immense pleasure to introduce our speaker, Mr. Sundareshan, who has more than ten years of experience in the field of software testing, in which he has worked for various clients from different domains like retail, life science, biopharmaceutical, and telecom. Now it's over to you, Sundar. Can you take over the session? Yeah, sure, uh, Sundar. So, okay. I'm starting my presentation. You start here. Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, so we're going to go into the session. So before going to the session, uh, I request every one of you who are not talking uh, to go on mute, please, so that uh, we do see you for a few days. ஒரு <laughs> 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 I think someone is presenting. Uh, so shall I present my screen or uh, Surendra? Yes, yes, sir. 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 Yes, Okay, so before uh, starting the session, uh, I just want to have a few words. Uh, like, I would like to thank Mr. Nagarajan for uh, um, creating this opportunity and uh, um, providing this uh, knowledge uh, transfer to everyone. Uh, and uh, um, thanks, Sumeran and uh, Mrs. Nandini, for uh, coordinating this very well. So, yeah, and uh, the next one is uh, about me. Um, so I completed my uh, BE graduation in Kalasalingam College of Engineering and uh, uh, I have around 10 years of experience in software field uh, where I was working for uh, different uh, clients from different domains. So and uh, I have experience on mainly on software testing field. So I was working as a um, software uh, trainee tester and then um, I just moved into uh, architect uh, role, so software test architect role. So I was mainly concentrating on uh, automation testing and performance testing. Um, so uh, I was into various different types of tools and uh, different types of applications, uh, software applications. So I just uh, I was uh, I'm very happy to uh, provide this uh, knowledge uh, or uh, domain knowledge or industry knowledge to everyone here. So let's start with uh, the session. <coughs> so anywhere or uh, if you get any doubts, you can stop me and uh, you can stop me and you can ask your doubts and clarify it. So let me share my uh, PowerPoint presentation.
Okay, so is my presentation uh, uh, visible to everyone? Okay. Um, so, so today's topic we are going to see is uh, trends in software testing. So, uh, when I when I uh, tell the trends in software testing, I just uh, don't want to go into uh, the coding or um, uh, programming language part or teach you how to do a, a coding for automation testing or something performance testing or something. So it is it is more of uh, information on how this industry is being um, um, getting uh, uh, emerged. The, the industry is getting emerged day by day. And uh, they are uh, they are adding more new facilities and no uh, introducing new tools and uh, uh, they are adapting new uh, process actually. I mean, the software testing industry is adapting new process tools and uh, technology. So I just want to go through uh, all these technological development as well as the process change which is being uh, adapted by the software industry uh, in this uh, decade. So let's start with the introduction. So I'm um, so I'm not sure uh, like uh, um, people the people who are attending this uh, particular webinar, right? So I'm not sure uh, whether they would know the basics of uh, software uh, development and the software testing and everything. So I'm just giving an overview of what is software development, software testing, and how this uh, process happens in the software development uh, cycle and all those things. Uh, so it will be a minimal uh, introduction to make sure everyone is uh, understanding uh, the uh, topic. And then we will be going into the core topic of uh, the different trends in software testing. So <clears throat> to start with uh, the Um, one second. So can you can you see my people here? Um, Surendran or uh, Nandini, can you share the PPT from your machines? Or because I'm sharing it, but uh, oh, one minute, sir, I will share it. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm sharing it, but it is not coming in the uh, screen. Mm -hmm. He's trying to share. Can you able to see? Sure. One second. Now it is loading. Uh, no. Um, it's not visible. It's Shall I try once more? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it is coming. It is coming, Surendra. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Ah, okay. okay. So, can you go to? Can you move to the next slide? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. So uh, you can see the agenda of this meeting here. So first, we will be giving you an overview, like uh, what is software testing. And then, uh, so why the software testing is essential for uh, uh, industry, and uh, what are the types of testing and its necessity, and so how this trend started. So beginning of this automation trend, test automation trend, and uh, how this automation got influenced into a different uh, types of testing. And uh, next, uh, I, as I told, uh, industry is emerging and technology is emerging. So how the, uh, the, the particular testing has been uh, emerging into mobile application testing. And uh, next is, uh, what is the latest uh, need of a software tester? And uh, the next thing is the future, future trends, which is expected to come in next two to three years, maybe. And uh, finally, a conclusion note. So <clears throat> yeah, you can move to the first slide. Uh, so that. OK, so what is software testing? So before going into this topic, even I need to give a note like, what is a software application? So uh, in early uh, 90s, right, or 90s or 95, so, but, but the software development process started in early uh, 1960s itself. So they were creating small uh, applications or softwares to uh, do small works, uh, uh, do their manual work 
and it was uh, slowly developing and it is uh, and they started to create more software applications initially during 90s and 80s and 90s period so you would have seen right if you want a software for example if you uh, want a erp software you know, erp or uh, um, some student management software or college management software or uh, a banking application anything they will be uh, providing you with the exe uh, they will be providing you an exe file so which needs to be installed in your computer right desktop computer so you will be doing the installation of that particular exe file and that particular software will be installed in your machine so best example is uh, like a calculator or something so it is an exe file it is a desktop based application you will be installing it and the particular ui will be opening in your machine this is the basic software or else uh, some gaming software so you could have seen some gaming software right which needs to be installed in your machine and that particular exe will be opening this is called desktop based applications slowly um, so when when i when i um, to be uh, clear when i joined my uh, college right so at that point of time we were using all uh, were using the uh, desktop based applications once i came out of college and joined the industry um, in nearly 2009 or 10 so uh, that is the time where uh, everyone was talking about web based applications people were talking like uh, hey the new trend is like uh, every software which is in exe format which is a um, particular computer is going to be uh, migrated into a web based application so why this migration from desktop application to web based application happened because so if you want to install a software for a particular company or for example i'm taking a college so uh, there is a college and uh, there are uh, uh, the college is having uh, around 500 staffs working on this particular college so they need to maintain a um, erp kind of software like to main maintain the student profile student database uh, the staffs profiles staff database and uh, admission details and all those things in a particular software so if there are 500 staffs they need to install this particular exe in 500 uh, 500 machines and they need to use it right so what they thought if we move this desktop based applications into a web based application that is they will be creating a website in a dom with a domain name that is the url which you are getting right and it will be hosted in a server and anyone from the college or the company can access the particular application through internet at from anywhere so that is the advantage of uh, moving the desktop based application into a web based application so um, so uh, moving on uh, sorinth can you go to the first slide yeah so yeah thank you so um, they moved into um, move from desktop based application into web based applications right so this is the first uh, um, migration from a uh, uh, desktop based to web based so this is a tech again this is a technology shift and uh, uh, they the people adapted to it actually so since it has a lot of uh, advantages people started adapting it nowadays you can see very very few desktop based applications or softwares which is being installed in your computer right so next after 5 uh, to 6 years or about 7 8 years uh, it it became the era of uh, mobile based applications when you see now uh, most uh, 90% of the web based applications for example the banking applications uh, so even um, the banks in india right uh, hdfc icici or uh, idbi anything and uh, flipkart.com amazon.com so any application software application you are seeing in web based is moving towards mobile based application so you are having app for everything even even uh, we can see uh, in tamil nadu government has been uh, uh, encouraging people to use their mobile apps so for example i could see uh, the tneb app which is uh, being used across uh, tamil nadu and uh, each and every state government and indian government is uh, um, advising us to use the digital payment system and everything is being uh, digitalized and moved to mobile apps so this is the next shift technology shift which we can see here uh, so uh, you can see right in, in the last 20 years uh, there are uh, two three technology shift 
and uh, they have migrated from desktop to uh, web and web to mobile and yeah so this is this is actually this is what we call as uh, technology uh, shift or technology emerging technologies right so that software testing is part of this emergence so uh, we cannot have the same technology same idea and same process of doing the testing of a particular software when they are shifting from one uh, technology into another technology or one uh, domain into another domain so we cannot use the same uh, process or same tools or same kind of uh, uh, testing for all these uh, technology they shift right so even software testing process is also emerging and it is creating new trends day by day so i think uh, everyone should have got an idea about what is a software and software application and how it is emerging from desktop application into still uh, till mobile based applications right so again so um, let, let me go back to the uh, the first part where uh, the software applications were developed right so uh, around uh, in 1979 uh, the one who we can see in the powerpoint right he is called mr glenn ford so he is a uh, he is a computer uh, scientist a american computer scientist and uh, entrepreneur and the author of eight books uh, about the technology and the, one of the main book is art of software testing he has written so it is in print for last 26 years even now you can uh, buy this book in amazon.com uh, so he is such a uh, technical uh, scientist so when when uh, he when he was uh, creating some software uh, for this particular company so he came into an idea of uh, doing a testing where he can detect all the errors and uh, um, separate this activity like a uh, development as an activity and uh, testing or assuring the quality as a separate activity so that uh, the dedicated people can do the testing and uh, they can find the errors or breakage in the particular system and make sure uh, a quality product is given to the customers so he, he brought this idea so of uh, having a software testing um, commercially so he's the one who found the base of testing he gave a lot of ideas how to test a particular uh, application uh, when i call application it is a software so <clears throat> so this is the starting point of having a separate uh, testing team or a quality assurance team for all software developments right so, so can you go to the next slide okay so when i say um, when i uh, use some technical terms right like uh, software application uh, so web based application desktop based applications you might uh, so few people might get uh, uh, confused or uh, you might have some questions so show me some real time examples so that we can understand right uh, yeah so uh, i am using a basic uh, uh, example so that everyone can understand and uh, relate uh, to uh, the, relate to that particular example so this is one of the example which we are uh, um, seeing in day to day life so whenever you enter a supermarket or uh, uh, big retail shops you can see this um, billing machine right along with the computer there will be a billing machine there will be a scanner there will be a printer, small sized printer where you can print the bills. So uh, uh, most of us would have seen this. So <clears throat> basically it is used for uh, billing, billing purpose and mostly it is used for billing purpose and for uh, maintaining the accounts and uh, it's kind of a ledger for this particular retail shop, right? So. Uh, when you see this, uh, uh, this, this is usually we call it as uh, software in software terms. We call it as point of sale application. So when some when the retail is selling something at that point of time, we will be using this software. Okay. So we have a software. We will be having the software installed in this particular machine. It is nothing but a computer with extra additional accessories. That's it. So we will be installing the particular software in this computer to make sure the billing process is happening properly okay so when i uh, let me consider as a 
a retailer i am having a supermarket and i, I need uh, i need a software like this so what i'll do i'll go to a particular uh, so software service provider for example um, in reality terms it may uh, i'm going to a company called like uh, example tcs or uh, cts or uh, some other um, service based companies right software service based companies and asking them um, boss i'm i'm opening a big supermarket or retail shop where i need some billing machines so two or three billing machines uh, so software billing softwares install in my machines so can you please create a software to do the billing purpose so my requirement is like i'll be telling my requirement as well so my requirement will be like i'll be giving uh, discounts for if you get five if you buy uh, five items i will be giving a discount if you buy 10 items i will be reducing the surcharge and uh, every for every item we have taxes so it should be calculated properly so i need such a software to be installed in my uh, point of sale application machines so can you please create one and give it to me so this is what the requirement of particular retail owner so the software developers right so in this particular company they will be designing this software and uh, they will be uh, writing the programming language codes using them either c c plus plus java python anything so they will be using it and they will be creating this software okay so creating this software and they will be installing it in the machine and when the if if you are not doing the software testing and directly providing it to the retailer let us consider you are providing the software to the retailer and asking him to start the uh, start using that particular billing machine right billing software so what happens here if let me uh, tell this if the developer has done a mistake during developing this particular software so so that you can see the discount percentage here right it is showing the 5% but in, in the while doing the coding or developing this particular application he may he might have done a mistake that it will show 5% but it will take the amount of 50% what will happen so the retailer will be in loss so rather than giving 50 rupees back as a discount the uh, retailer will be giving 500 rupees right so it is a loss for them because of a bug so when when retailer comes back to the developer and says or uh, the uh, service based company which is uh, uh, <clears throat> which is preparing the software so he will be telling that uh, boss i am not satisfied with your application it is having lot of issues errors uh, which is creating lo big loss for me then that particular software is a failure software right so <clears throat> what uh, we need here is if there is a software testing team or dedicated people who can test that particular software what they will be doing is they will be writing the test cases right test cases is nothing but if you have a functionality for a particular application for example this is a point of sale billing application right the first functionality would be like on scanning the item barcode it should be showing the item details in the system and then it should be showing the different rates quantity everything and third point third scenario is like it should uh, show the correct discount percentage it should give the surcharge and it should uh, show the taxes calculated properly and the overall item details uh, price details right these are the functionalities which needs to be tested once by the testing team before giving it to the uh customer or client or uh, the in our terms to do the retail owner right it should be tested if it has been tested then this particular error would have been avoided and uh, the customer satisfaction would be good and customer will be happy to use this and even client will be very uh, happy to use this right so uh, more than customer satisfaction the quality of product which we are providing will be uh, up to the level and uh, we will, we will be in the market uh, in a steady manner right so this is the uh, example of a software bug I'm just i'm giving an example of software bug so in order to find all this software bugs we need to write proper test cases and then we need to implement process proper process in order to find all this software bug so i think everyone would have got an idea of what is the software uh, bug or error and then we can move to the next slide um, okay 
and then again so i explained what is a software bug but you need to know what is the impact of a software bug in real time which is ha which has happened real time right so i need to give you an example of real time software bug which cost us around 500 billion dollars so uh, i think everyone would have been come came across this y2k the term y2k right i hope everyone would have uh, heard this word y2k but we were not sure what exactly the problem is so this y2k the problem of y2k came uh, in the year 1999 and 2000 so where uh, uh, people started uh, the people who has the softwares right for the uh, for their business purpose and their day to day activities so they started panicking like uh, it will it will cause a huge loss for them and uh, some of the people found that this issue has already caused a lot of uh, loss for them so the issue is like while doing the coding right before 2000 before 2000 uh, the developers who are doing the coding so they were not uh, aware of the implications or it is not uh, they were not aware of the implications of using uh, the two digits for mentioning the years so all in all their all of their programs for example the banking website may be there banking application may be there some industrial financial applications may be there uh, some educational uh, applications may be there all those applications the developers were uh, using two digit numbers to represent a particular year so when they are using a two digit number whenever uh, they ask the customer details like what is your date of birth they will ask the customer to enter uh, the two digit number. okay so and uh, when you are doing the banking transaction like uh, money transfer or something you you will be shown only the last two digits of the uh, two digits of the year when it came to 2000 so till 1999 it was very uh, normal and they were didn't find any bugs and when it came to 2000 all the years uh, which has been uh, showing in the system was showing 00 rather than showing 20 so this is a uh, big discrepancy happening across all the softwares across world right so the software developers have developed it but the testers uh, software testers right who tested it didn't test it in a futuristic uh, way so if they would have uh, tested it in a futuristic way they would have given this 2000 as a year and tested it and they would have found that uh, it is showing 00 rather than 20 so some of the software industries didn't take it serious and they incurred a big huge loss and later it was uh, fixed by all the software developers across world for their software programs so what we can learn here so it is better to have a, a good level of testing before we move into um, production or uh, real uh, live uh, domain right so it will save your money and time and it will avoid uh, unwanted panic and everything will be going smooth so here uh, you can understand why the software proper software testing is essential right and um, moving to the next slide now so, <coughs> so uh, you may ask yes uh, so you are telling software testing is very essential but uh, we have only heard about uh, software development uh, mm, uh, so in common we will be hearing about software development term, right so software development is uh, not a term it is a process or life cycle so we can call it as sdlc which is nothing but software development life cycle and uh, another one is stlc i'll tell you later right so in sdlc software development life cycle as i said the client or the owner will be coming up with some requirements um, boss this is my requirement i need a website or web application where i can sell my products i need a e-commerce website like amazon or flipkart i need a xyz.com so where i can sell my so um, i may be as a toy seller right i am i'm importing the toys from china or somewhere else from the world and i'm trying to uh, sell it in a website where i can put all my toys details price uh, details and people must uh, be able to 
purchase the toys online. So it is an e-commerce website I need to create. So this is the requirement I am giving to the software developers or developing company. So what they will do is they will do analysis, right? So how this particular website, how this client is expecting. So what are the expectations from the client? They will be analyzing it and they will be coming up with the design. Design is nothing but a, a template kind of thing or a, it's a, 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 a it's a framework kind of thing. So they will be coming with a design. So this is this this is how this particular application should look like. And after coming up with the design, they will be coming to the coding part. Coding is nothing but they will be having software developers who are technically well versed in um, programming languages like either C, C++, Java, Python, uh, anything. Uh, uh, so Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and all those things. So you know, they will be uh, going to the software developers and they will be doing the coding to uh, achieve that particular design. So once it is achieved, so for example, this e-commerce website has been created. So what they need to do is they cannot directly go to the particular uh, um, client or customer and say, boss, we are ready with the design. It is developed, just developed and you can start using it because there might be a lot of issues. So even software developers, they are not machines or robots. They are also humans, right? They, the human errors will be there in each and every software. Okay, so, um, so that particular human errors are nothing but bugs or issues which testing team will be detecting, right? So there comes the phase of testing. You can see here, right, the green color, which is the testing phase, which comes after the coding. This is the normal uh, uh, conventional method. So don't think like uh, uh, till this uh, till we reach this particular part of SDLC, we will be uh, sitting idle. So the testing team will not sit idle. So the testing, the particular software testing team will have a process called STLC, which is nothing but software testing lifecycle. So here, when when the developers and uh, the client is getting the com the company is getting the requirements right, they will also start analyzing the requirement. Uh, like how to test this application, how this application will be built, how we can test this application, how we can find more bugs. So all those requirement details will be analyzed. And this test planning, right? So in, the, in this space, they will be analyzing. So how big is this application and how many people we need to, to test the entire functionalities of this application in how much time we can do the testing, we can complete the testing. And uh, so all these details will be done in test planning. And next we come to test design, right? In test design, we will be designing the test cases, whether either it may be manual or automation or uh, anything, right? So we will be designing the test cases for each scenarios. We might have one test case or 10 test case. So we might have 100 test cases, right? So we will be designing the test cases. The test cases is nothing but the steps to find the bugs we will be uh, going through the application like uh, if you consider an e-commerce application right the first step will be launching the application second step will be logging the application third step will be uh, searching for some toys and fourth step will be adding it to the cart fifth step will be moving to the cart and adding or deleting extra items in the cart and finalizing the um, cart items and then sixth step will be like a payment gateway where you will be doing the payment and sixth step will be thank you message and with the details, right? So these are the steps in particular application which needs to be tested. So all these scenarios will be converted into test cases. We will be writing it manually or through code, uh, anyone, uh, manual or automation testing and we will be making it ready. So next is the environment setup. In order to uh, uh, test this application, right? We need, if it is a web-based application or if it is a desktop based application or mobile based application, we need a environment. For example, if it is a web based application, we need a server application server where this application needs to be uh, deployed or installed so that we can uh, test that application and uh, come up with the bugs, right? Or issues. So uh, this environment setup needs to be done. And then we will be doing the execution. Execution is nothing but testing. Uh, real testing will happen here. And after the testing, we might be uh, finding um, n number of bugs, right? 
all those bugs will be given back to the developers and developers will fix those bugs mistakes uh, which has been done uh, human errors it may be so they will be fixing it again they will be giving it to the testing team so testing team will be retesting it and make sure all the bugs are fixed and finally we will be giving the test closure the test closure is nothing but signing off uh, that we have uh, no bug no more bugs are there we are signing off this particular software we can give it to the uh, client so this is the testing life cycle which is happening and uh, after testing you can see in the sdlc there is a point called deployment deployment is nothing but giving the software to the end user so uh, so this is the basic thing happening inside a software company you might you might uh, you know, so people uh, even uh, my father or my mother who was not aware of even my uh, sisters who are not aware of uh, what is happening inside a software company right actually this is the one which is happening inside this software company the uh, developers are doing the development testers are doing the testing we have planning we have uh, design everything is happening and this is the entire life cycle of a software development so because of why i am telling all these things in this session is to make sure people are understanding the basics what is happening in the software industry and what is the part of software testing how it is getting emerged day by day so then only you can get the idea of uh, new technology which is emerging right so you can go to the next slide um, so uh, guys well, please let me know if i am go going little bit fast or if you are not able to understand any uh, terminologies which has been used in uh, software testing or software so i'll just give you an overview or i'll give you an example real time example so that uh, you can get clarified so if it is little bit fast please let me know through uh, chat or something surendra uh, please let surendra know so i'll reduce my speed okay so next slide please surendra <coughs> yeah so uh, after this uh, process right we need to know what kind of testing which is doing we have a lot of types of testing actually so this is not a simple word testing so there are two major uh, types of testing one is functional testing and non functional testing as i said functional testing uh, you can see four different uh, sub categories under functional testing right so there are four different categories um, as i said if it is a e-commerce website right uh, even i gave you a example like different units first unit is launching the application and getting the uh, items in the particular website second unit is adding it into the cart and the cart page is a second unit third unit is like a payment gateway where we do the all payment activities fourth one is checkout uh, unit so there are four different units which needs to be created and it needs to be tested separately right um uh, sorry uh, someone has uh, stopped the presentation or in the presentation so then can you see again present so i can see some other uh, people are presenting the their screen can you stop that and present the slide neela ready ma'am neela ready ma'am can you please stop your presentation i think uh, you can override right um, you can do the presentation or i can i can can you do the presentation yeah. again yeah. i can do so yeah you will be overriding it actually. yeah okay thank you can so you. again it is coming yeah okay so um can you go into uh, presentation yeah before this ah, yeah, thank you so when i talk about units right uh, in a particular software there might be uh, i'm just telling an example with four units there might be 40 units um, which needs to be created for creating this particular software so this unit testing basically uh, will be done by developers themselves because they are creating a small units and they are testing they will be testing by themselves and next is the integration testing so integration testing is nothing but uh, so when you have 40 units or four units anything we need to integrate it right so uh, sc maybe screen 1 and 2 is unit 1 screen 3 and 4 is unit 4 uh, sorry unit 2 right so we need to integrate these two screens 
on clicking some button in the screen 2 it should move to screen 3 which is the next unit right so we will be what we will be doing once the developer completes the unit testing and giving all the units uh, bits and as bits and pieces to the tester so tester will be testing all these units are getting integrated properly so first testing will be integration testing next is after integrating it as a flow or a complete application we will be doing a system testing which is like end to end testing from um, starting the application till checking out of the cart and closing the application this is this complete testing will come under system testing so system testing after this actually there is a term which is uh, not mentioned here called regression testing so everyone uh, i uh, uh, so this regression testing, please uh, make note of this term called regression testing, which comes between system testing and acceptance testing. So why it is not mentioned here? So at first, uh, while giving the first deployment or first delivery to the client, uh, creating that application, there might not be uh, regression testing available. So what is regression testing? Why, where it is being used? So. I am creating a small application, for example, Amazon.com uh, is an application which was created only for e-commerce website in the beginning. So they were selling only uh, some uh, dress or mobiles or uh, electronic items. Later, they wanted to uh, make it bigger by having Amazon pay and uh, and they started uh, giving uh, gift cards and those are the functionalities which are getting updated day by day. This is for uh, amazon.com alone we have n thousands and lakhs of software uh, products which are getting updated and uh, day by day it is getting updated every week uh, the client uh, the client will be coming back to the owner owner of the software will be coming back to the software developer tell boss um, i need this new functionality in my application i need the extra functionality in this application it needs to be having uh, so for example a retail customer right a retail uh, machine is there suddenly when christmas is coming i mean in, in us uh, there is one famous day called black friday so in black friday for example in uh, uh, india we, we we have heard about deepavali and uh, pongal uh, offers right so like that there is the uh, offer called black friday offer in uh, united states so during this black friday they will be providing all the items in a um, reduced rate right so for that they need to change the application they need to change the background uh, uh, percentage calculation price and everything right uh, so uh, so they need to uh, yeah, um, so, so then, then, ah, yeah okay so um, so every software application needs update while it is in market right they will be incorporating the new functionalities additional changes and everything right so at that point of time when software developer is adding some functionalities for example if there are only four units in the beginning may you uh, the customer may require two more units to be added right so when it is added we should make sure as a tester we should make sure by adding the new functionality into it the existing functionality of the particular application should not be get disturbed or it should not break at any point of time by adding the new functionality. So this type of testing is called regression testing. So this regression testing will have initially we have four units and we might have uh, 40 test cases for completing the entire flow. So if you are adding two more functionalities every month or uh, once in a month or twice in a month, so when the functionalities are getting added, the particular test cases which are used for new functionalities will be getting added to the regression testing. Okay. So again, if you are adding that to the regression testing, this regression testing suit will slowly grow. And it uh, when you, if you, you, you would have started it with 40 test cases at one point of time, it will have 400 test cases or 500 or 1000 test cases. But this regression suit will get updated uh, with every update or every release we will be updating it okay so after this regression testing there is a, a testing called acceptance testing so acceptance testing is usually called as user acceptance testing so uh, for example i am a uh, retail owner 
who is asking for a product from a software company and they are developing it testing it yeah they they can do everything and they are, they are providing the software to me before i start using the software i need to do a basic level of testing so because i need to make sure even though i rely on software developers and software testers and software companies i myself should test a basic uh, functionality flow so that i will be uh, uh, i'll be happy enough like uh, yeah it is confirmed that all these functionalities are working so that type of testing is called user acceptance testing so they will be doing we will be giving the software to the user and ask them to test some scenarios and get their feedback and if everything is goes fine then it will be deployed in the production which is nothing but user uh, facing uh, systems so this is functional testing totally when it comes to the non functional testing so for example you are having a e commerce website or banking website so hdfc uh, icici or anyone they can have some banking websites right so you are a customer of hdfc and i am a customer of icici when you are logging into the hdfc.com and i am trying to log into the icici.com right websites so if it is taking 5 to 6 minutes to just log in or open a page or else you are logging in and clicking some money transfer button or link to transfer some money if it is taking 5 minutes just to load the particular page the user will definitely get fed up and they will suddenly they will think of moving from hdfc to icici which is loading in few seconds right so this is the mindset of users nowadays they are actually uh, expecting a lightning speed uh, and performance better performance of the website right so when creating a website we should not uh, only test the particular functionality flow of the website rather than uh, we should add these non functional testing like performance of the website suppose if you are having a website uh, for example in amazon.com at a particular time new year or diwali they will be giving lot of uh, offers right at that point of time at the same time thousands and lakhs of users will try to launch that particular application or site and they will try to place the orders at that point of time the server uh, the hosting server right the, the the application will be hosted in a server might not uh, um might not uh, um um right enhance or endure the total load and it might break so total application will be breaking for all this 1 lakh users right so every time we need to do the performance testing to check how much load this particular application can um uh, endure and what is the breaking point by giving extra stress we can test like uh, at what point of time this application is getting uh, broken so sometimes till 1 lakh users application might be working fine if you add thousand more users 1 lakh and thousand application might break so we should know at what level that application will break for that we need a performance testing um so again sugandran i missed the um powerpoint presentation here in the screen um yeah one meeting sir i will uh, make presentation yeah okay okay so this kind of performance testing is needed to make sure your application is loading fast and uh, there is no lag in your application when more people are getting into your application and again um, the, the usability uh, the usability which is uh, determined by the speed of the application is good and how load and we should be aware about the, the maximum load your application can take you might expect 100 people so in, uh, so we are using the google meet uh, link right so we expected 100 people in, even uh, 200 yeah. coming to this particular meeting yeah. even 200 people are coming into this meeting this is working fine without any breakage or lag right so this is what the performance is good so we can say this particular google meet application is having a good performance even though 200 people are here and everyone is connected uh, to the meeting everything is going fine we are seeing uh, we are hearing the um, speech without any difficulties right so this is called the performance of this application so so when then uh, can you share or shall i present now and the presenting week
So let me know when you can see my screen. What's happening? Sorry, I, I cannot see you. Uh, see the PPT here, and so like that. Let me do one thing. I'll just try to share once. Shall I do it, Surendra? So let me know if you can see my screen. Um, any participants? OK. So I'll be sharing. Um, so again, so performance testing. Non-functional testing is nothing but a performance testing. Then the security testing. So I'm not sure how many of you have heard about uh, the uh, security breach which has happened in uh, CTS recently. So CTS is one of the major service-based companies which is having uh, clients across the world. But it uh, faced a security threat, uh, a malware threat, uh, which happened. And uh, all their system got hanged. And uh, so all the system got hacked, actually. So so this is, uh, this is one uh, kind of security testing. Uh, one second. Let me know if you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. OK, so this is one kind of uh, security threat which is being faced by all software applications. So for example. Sir, make it as a full screen, sir. Ah, yeah, OK. Is it OK? OK. OK, so um, you are using a lot of banking applications, right? You are using the banking applications even when you take some e-commerce websites like Amazon or Flipkart. Why I'm quoting this Amazon and Flipkart frequently is this is the one we are using on day to day basis, right? So uh, in, in Amazon, there is an option to store your debit card details in your profile so that you can use it uh, in seconds when you are ordering for the next time. So these type of confidential informations of particular users are getting stored in your applications so that should it should be more secured so none, none of the hackers hackers or uh, so, uh, again people who do a uh, technical uh, technological uh, theft right so they should not hack your application and uh, get the details of your uh, application user uh, user details especially right uh, for this, we need to the sec do, do, do security testing. We have uh, enough tools for that, uh, penetrating testing or security testing. So it should be, your application should be safe enough uh, that hackers uh, should not inject any malwares or uh, virus into your application and make your application to go down or uh, they should not take away the user data from your application. So this is called security testing. Third one is usability testing. Usability testing is very simple. So any kind of user uh, should be able to um, go through your application and uh, do the kind of processing in your application without uh, any difficulties. So simple terms, um, that should be clear uh, idea like click here, go to the next page, please place the cart and all those usability things should be uh, easy easier for any kind of user so user may be a technical person he may be a old person he may be a, a new user to the particular application for everyone it should be simple and usable so that testing is called usability testing that the fourth one is compatibility testing so compatibility testing is very 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 important testing part you may be seeing it as a last part but it is very important as we are as i said we are emerging from desktop based application till mobile based right so you for using a particular application or banking or uh, e-commerce or any applications. So I may, uh, so I'm using a Windows based machine, um, which is having a Windows based machine and I'm, uh, uh, and I'm trying to reach the application through Chrome browser. So you might, I, uh, so multiple participants will be there. They might use Mozilla Firefox as their favorite uh, uh, browser. Uh, some of the people might have Apple and uh, Mac systems, which has iOS uh, devices, right? So some might use still uh, Internet Explorer, uh, Mozilla Firefox, uh, uh, Chrome, 
or Safari, any kind of browsers, any kind of operating system, Windows, Mac, or anything, they can even someone can use Linux or something, something else, right? So compatibility, and and uh, I may use Windows 98. You may, may use Windows uh, latest 10 version, right? So this operating system versions, uh, browsers. So your application should be compatible at least with maximum of uh, latest uh, operating system as well as browsers right so they will be calling even they will be calling a separate testing called cross browser testing especially for browsers because a lot of browsers are coming in right so uh, there is a cross browser testing as well it is it comes under the compatibility so all these kinds of testing needs to be done uh, be before a software application goes into life uh, directly to the user uh, perspective right so these are the things happening uh, behind the scenes so when you are seeing a new website uh, uh, you just see the ui of the website user interface of the website but in back end a lot of things a lot of things are happening in software industry so this is just a testing part think about the development part what uh, people in from development do from their end they are, they'll be doing a lot of technology technical work as well so this is about types of testing so when i tell functional testing i added one term important term called regression testing right so um, in early uh, 90s right early 90s or 2000 um, people were doing this regression testing all through manual work Manual work means they will be uh, hiring uh, testers. So in order to uh, test a very big website, right, for an e-commerce website or something, uh, we might have thousand regression test cases to complete, uh, do the complete testing, right? We will be doing it uh, every month or every month there will be a new update, new tech, new uh, functionality will be um, developed. So every month or twice in a month, we will be doing the development of new uh, new update, right? At that point of time, we will need to do the regression testing to make sure entire functionality is working fine. If there are 500 test cases to test the entire functionality, we uh, and uh, the time the time is very important here because the client might ask, "Boss, I need this new functionality within four days or three days to be developed and uh, incorporated in my existing application." At that point of time, we need to do the regression testing to make sure the quality is not affected. So we might need five to six testing people or testers to test the entire 500 regression test cases to make sure the functionality is not broken. So software companies started it uh, started uh, seeing it as a uh, cost not a cost effective way of doing this testing. And it is extra burden to hire the testing people with proper uh, domain knowledge and uh, asking them to do the, execute the testing within short period of time because everyone is human, right? Uh, so if you are uh, allocating 100 test cases per person, they can do at least 50 to 60 cases per day. And again, if you are taking uh, this five people are taking uh, 10 days, right? Sorry, two days to complete this 500 test cases, uh, the manual effort, maybe they are working for eight hours per day. Let me consider they are working for eight hours per day. So five people, it is 18 to five, 40 hours per day. And you are uh, taking two days to complete this testing. Then it is 80 hours per release. So 80 hours. So usually software companies um, get the payment in hourly basis, right? So maybe for a hour, it might be at $100 or $200. Then think about 80 hours, how much money is getting invested here, right? So, so they thought the software companies started thinking in a way like uh, how we will be reducing the cost getting involved in this software regression testing or software entire software testing process. So, they started uh, thinking about reducing the human intervention and increasing the uh, uh, deliverables or reducing the human intervention and reducing the total time taken to uh, provide the delivery. So these two things should happen at some point of time. So what we can do at that point of time, people started thinking about automation testing. This is the point where automation testing got emerged, right? When, so uh, it is, it is natural. Like whenever we get a problem, then only we will think about the solutions. So problems are the base 
to uh, more uh, discoveries right when we when we thought it is uh, it is becoming uh, it is very hard to survive without uh, a light so they found the light right so likewise we when we face new problems they, we will start thinking about resolving the new problem with new discoveries so they started thinking about automation testing the term called automated testing where we will reduce the human intervention and we will reduce the cost present it is already in continuing yeah yeah i think uh, surendran uh, you need to present it uh, because for me uh, it is getting disconnected so let me know when you can see my screen on it sir i will present it okay let me know if you are able to see Yeah. Okay. So, Nandan, I think I'm I'm fine with that. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 So, uh, at this point of time, the term automation testing came into existence, right? So, next thing is people started thinking about how this automation testing can be done. We we should make sure this quality assurance uh, through automation testing so should uh, uh, satisfy all these conditions in the left side. So you can see here, right? It should guarantee. that the application should be bug free and uh, if you are uh, having some hindrance then again service should be there and satisfaction of the customer business uh, should be running as usual even though there is some issues and a customer uh, standard should be maintained so again we should think about this and we should implement some automation in the testing so that our uh, cost and uh, time will be reduced so at in the beginning Uh, the few companies like um, the the first company which started right uh, the mercury you can uh, can hear about the word called mercury they introduce some automation testing tools so later this mercury company has been acquired by hp so who introduced the uh, the first uh, um, tool which is seen here right unified functional testing which is previously called as qtp so these are some of the automation testing tools which can uh, Uh, by which we can create uh, the test test cases using uh, vb script or some other programming languages and we can uh, create the test cases and it will automatically execute those test cases without any human intervention right so but again uh, this uh, hp ibm all those companies came up with new kind of automation testing tools and uh, but but again all these testing tools have licensing cost the licensing cost when i say licensing cost it is not that's as simple as that so the licensing cost of a particular uh, unified functional testing right it goes in lakhs for single user if you think it is in some lakhs when you have five testers automation testers you need to get five uh, licenses so think about the total cost involved in it e even though it is having a licensing cost the uh, company started acquiring this particular tool and they started using it because they saw better return on investment even though they invest in this particular tool they start better return on investment in terms of reducing the human resources as well as time so they they accepted these tools and started using it in the automation testing field later there are lot of companies which started creating open source tools when you know uh, so i'm not sure how many of you know about open source here open source tools are created by some companies uh, for example selenium selenium you can see here right it is a open source tool which is being created by thoughtworks thoughtworks company is creating it as a open source tool and uh, it is like it is that is doesn't have any licensing cost so this open source tools came into uh, market and uh, people started uh, adapting to the open source tools because here comes the cost cutting point where you don't need to give any licensing cost for using this applications so for functional testing we were using unified functional tester ibm rational and everything for non functional testing we are previously using load runner which is also a part of uh, mercury and later uh, hp acquired it and uh, uh, all those soap ui and all those things we were using with licensing cost right 
later it came the, the open source when open source came selenium is a open source appium is a open source jmeter is a open source selenium we used for functional testing appium we used for mobile testing and jmeter we used for performance testing which is non functional testing and same with this bbd cucumber and sopi these are the some tools with license and without licensing cost that is um, licensed and open source so lot of things came in so uh, this is just a few examples i'm showing here apart from this these tools we have thousands of two new tools in the um, market so these are the tools which has been widely used because we have good support for these tools and we are uh, having uh, technical uh, skills the person with technical skills on these tools are available in the market so we are using these tools okay so um, for functional testing we are using this uh, license tool as well as open source tools and when it comes to uh, non functional testing i usually when when i uh, um, teach uh, non functional testing or performance testing to my team members in my team right i usually use this uh, uh, funny picture like um, to to educate them or to make them clear what is uh, um, load testing or performance testing let us consider these two trucks right these are your application software applications or our servers which is holding your application right so at the same time uh, the people who are sitting on that application with their extra loads right they are called as user load a number of people who are utilizing your application or launching or using your application at the same time right so what happens here is you could see um, these two trucks have very good endure endurance even after the it is overloaded it is performing very well it is not breaking anywhere and it is moving perfectly right so we should make sure but again even but again if you load the double of this if you increase the load by again double of the same load that particular hardware or software or application might get broken right so this is where you are testing the endurance of the application or performance of the application so when you are doing it manually how can you do it for a particular application can you make uh, can you bring 1000 people from somewhere else and make them to sit in a computer and uh, can you ask them to hit this particular website at the same time to make sure it is not breaking is it possible in real time so it is not possible so what we can do we can use the software applications which i told earlier right uh, this uh, load runner or jmeter we can create the virtual users by softwares and uh, make them to hit the application from any part of the world so this is the advantage of using the tools application software testing tools so they will be creating virtual users we will call it as virtual users uh um, so we can make them them to hit from any part of the country that is very important so uh, we can make them we can simulate this virtual users using our automation tools and make them to hit the application our application server and we can get the report or analytics back uh, bus uh, so when your application has been hit by 1000 virtual users your server is going down so your limit is less than 1000 users to make sure whether you are increasing the capacity of your server or reducing your users so this is the point we are getting here and uh, the minimum performance so sometimes even for 10 users your application might go down this is the minimum performance which your application can uh, accommodate so please make sure your performance of your application is Uh, made better or fine tuned to accept these much users so this is the result we are getting from non functional testing tools in minutes or seconds and uh, we are reduce see how much manual human resources we are reducing by using such tools for non functional testing can you imagine thousand people sitting in front of the computer and hitting a particular application and testing this uh, endurance is it possible so that's where all these automation tools comes into existence so this is one such example for non functional testing and as i said uh, the emerging uh, the technology is emerging right so most of the applications got moved from web based into mobile based application as i said you have might have a android mobile 
you might have a windows mobile you might have a ios which is apple um, mobile right so we have different uh, platforms here like windows uh, ios and linux likewise we have uh, uh, mobile based applications as well so all these applications are coming into mobile at this point of time we need to do the testing for these mobile devices as well so all this system testing unit testing uh, integration testing system testing and regression testing uh, finally user acceptance testing everything will be done on these mobile devices as well so this is the latest trend which we are doing so again when you are doing in a mobile device can if you have if you are having five te mobile based testers right can you afford can a company afford for five devices maybe for example if one ipad not only iphones we are testing we are testing across devices right so I, ipad is one of the device which we, we are testing currently so ipad uh, when we consider ipad each ipad cost nearly 1 lakh rupees so if you are having test tester, 10 testers across your company can you afford 10 ipads for all these tests is it, 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 it is advisable no right so we can use a lot of uh, testing tools like uh, c test automation appm open source renorex in order to simulate uh, these devices they have already developed it they have simulated all the devices and we can using the simulation part we can we can install this particular apk file in android it's called apk file each application into the simulation or in ios it is called uh, um, uh, ipa ipa files so we can install it uh, virtually and we can test all these applications in mobile devices so currently appm and c test automation right those are the two good tools which is getting survived in market and used by all the clients which even i am currently using it for testing my mobile based applications so here in appm it is an open source application right so you can directly have this app there are two types of uh, softwares in appm one is appm server and appm studio so we can directly install that particular application software in our uh, windows machine and just connect it through a, a cable with a ios device or normal windows device or android device and you can directly uh, communicate with this device and particular application and test it through automation so when you say you are telling about automation automation so what is the main purpose or what is the advantage of using it uh, using automation testing right so i'll just tell one thing one example so you have thousand test cases right so which the all these thousand test cases needs to be tested in through automation so when you are doing it manually so but we are working in office from morning 9 to 6 pm let, let us consider we are in a normal shift and we are working for 8 to 10 hours in office so at this point of time you are not getting the developed entity from software developer so software developer is telling boss i can give you uh, the application for testing only at six o'clock which is my uh, leaving time so at that point of time i cannot test it uh, but the client who is uh, expecting the software to be uh, delivered right he is expecting it on tomorrow uh, morning 11 o'clock so what is the case here either all these five to ten, if you're relying on manual testing all this first five uh, resources should uh, extend their timing in office and they need to sit after six o'clock and they should test all the 500 test cases till overnight and in the morning they should deliver to the customer right so in order to avoid this if you have a, a automation testing developer can give it at six o'clock this uh, automation testing can be scheduled to start run at six o'clock once the development developer gives in the particular build right it will start testing automatically without any human intervention and it will complete the entire testing and it will share the reports through email and which can be shared to the developer and tester and in the morning when tester comes back again he needs just one hour or two hours to analyze the failures in the test report and it will be, uh, in, and it will be developed to the and it will be delivered to the particular customers right so this is the advantage of automation testing and again the next thing is like um, this is era of sdet so where um, 
usually when i joined the industry i was called as test engineer automation test engineer automation test leader such such terms were used now the industry is expecting everyone to be a stet software developers in test the software developers or the testers who are doing the testing right should at least know one of these uh, mentioned technology or uh, idea in these technologies for example selenium is necessary for a tester jnt is necessary for a tester and confluence jira are uh, like uh, uh, tools which where uh, the management of this application code management can be done and uh, other uh, kubernetes and ansible or uh, um, um, deploying things so when you are um, when you are uh, when you are uh, uh, being a software tester uh, industry is expecting this stet role so uh, we should make sure uh, we are uh, equipped well to meet this expectation and next is robotic process automation is nothing but again a, a tool which is developed for uh, doing uh, the mundane process or a redundant process which is happening across the industries so it is expected that uh, it will reach 1 billion by 20 or 2020 on the investment of this robotic process automation right it uh, it will reach uh, 1 billion by 2020 so iot the final thing is iot and ai which is nothing but the future a uh, trend of testing so internet of things you all know now people can connect their entire devices at home through internet and they can operate everything through uh, mobile phones or some with some sensors right so the testing of this internet of things is the uh, booming technology or booming things which is expected in future and we have lot of tools in uh, market one is shodan and thinkful so we can get an idea of this internet of things and finally ai so artificial intelligence using machine learning so what i said right there are some process like uh, requirement analysis test case design test data uh, preparation and test execution all these are done manually right previously entire thing will be done through robots or uh, machine learning it can be done this is the future of software development as well as testing so but i think uh, we expected this to happen in 2020 but uh, it is not fully uh, implemented maybe in another 5 years or 6 years we can expect uh, the complete domination of artificial intelligence in this software field so conclusion what is the conclusion here so you can see the picture right we started as a beginner uh, like a ape and now uh, uh, we are uh, running along with a robot in future everything will be controlled by a robot so uh, in 2020 uh, we need to know selenium definitely we need to know selenium automation testing that is as it is used widely throughout the industries and it will be dominating the testing uh, part and the codeless automation so the codeless automation part is coming soon which will also use selenium as a background uh, so mobile devices testing will uh, um, will play a major role in testing industry as well so better what we should do as uh, to survive in the industry only thing as we should learn the new technologies we should adapt to the new process and we should be able to uh, work on the new process and technology as soon as possible this is the only thing we need to do to survive in the industry so i think i am done uh, sorry for taking uh, some more time and plan so if you guys have any questions here you can ask um so i'll be shall stop sharing the session participants okay. if you have any queries men please ask yeah i can see some uh, comments here yes uh, to uh, one question is there as an instrumentation engineer uh, do we have the eligibility to work on a software industry right yes to to make you clear i am an instrumentation and control engineer i <laughs> i am an instrumentation control engineer i did my bachelor of engineering in kalachalingam college so i am a core uh, instrumentation engineer who is working completely into software industry only thing is we need to learn uh, the learn the um, basics of software testing and the languages of programming languages like java c++ if you are sure enough that you can learn you can definitely come into the industry that's a good question 
white box testing so yeah so i didn't went into that uh, technology level white box testing and black box testing right so white box testing and black box testing is nothing but uh, black box testing is like testing the uh, completed functionality for example i said right just uh, application is working fine or not white box testing is directly going into the developer's code and uh, verifying verifying that particular code is written properly or not for white box testing you need uh, programming knowledge programming uh, skills and you need to know you, you should be a developer rather than being a tester you should be a developer for doing the black box testing we just need a testing knowledge so that is the difference here Which testing tool most of the industries are using? So testing tool, I said, uh, for functional testing, they are using Selenium. For non-functional testing, they are using JMeter. And for mobile-based testing, most of the industries are using Appium. So these are the three uh, current uh, trending tools in software industry. Um, non-functional testing, See, yeah, you are right. Why the name non-functional testing? So when you are testing a functionality, particular functionality, it is called functional testing. You are not in non-functional testing when you are checking the performance, security. This is not functional, right? So these are not functional. These are other than functionality. We have a lot of things to be tested, which is security, performance, compatibility, etc. So they got categorized under non-functional testing. Yeah, bugs leads to vulnerability. Which testing is suitable to fix it? Definitely, it is uh, vulnerable. Uh, as I said, if there is a bug to allow all the users uh, without logging into the application. Um, hackers may enter into the application and then hack your system and then uh, they, get, they might uh, hack the data, complete data, and they might threaten you back uh, uh, by having the data. What is WinRunner? So WinRunner, uh, WinRunner is the very first tool uh, before uh, QTP, quality uh, QTP or UFT, Unified Functional Tester, right? They used WinRunner where uh, they will be using the um, different programming language to write the test cases. Later, it, uh, they started using uh, Quick Test Professional. After WinRunner was the first tool, even I was working, trying to work. Later, it was uh, turned into QTP, Quick Test Professional and Unified Test Functional Tester. It is again an uh, automation tool. And can we get some tamples or test cases and testing report for real time progress? Yeah, definitely. Um, but I'm not uh, entitled to share any of my um, uh, data from my company. So you can get it uh, all these sample test cases and in internet, even in Google, Google, like, uh, like a sample test case or sample uh, test report, you will get it definitely. What is 5G for 5G technology or any testing tools? Yes, 5G technology is on the way. So while doing the mobile application testing, we are testing that application on uh, Wi-Fi, uh, 4G, 3G, every network we will be testing. That. Definitely, yeah, it is. We actually we are doing it, but not 5G because it is not yet uh, into the industry, right? Any website are available for a list of test cases which can be practiced yeah there are a lot of websites in order to make sure uh, it is very easy or uh, understandable you can go through guru99.com so guru99.com is a website where you get in uh, every detail about software testing guru99.com and any mini tool for software cost estimation software cost estimation um, there is nothing, uh, that there is no definite tools. We need, to, uh, you need to approach some service-based companies. So where they will be get your record, getting your requirements and then they will coming up with the software cost. Now, not any, there is no definite tools for this. I only mentioned the certificate course named related to software testing. Uh, it is ISTQB. IST, if you search for ISTQB, you will be getting a lot of information about the certificates. Uh, which needs to be done in software testing, ISTQB or ASTQB. Mm. These are the major certifications. Free to use to generate test cases and reports from SRS. So what do you mean by SRS? I'm not sure. Semi tool for small grip technology in Tripoli. Um, I think I need to check this because I'm not sure about small grip technology in Tripoli. Sorry, uh, maybe I can get you back in email once we are checking it interesting leads 
to 100 percent no i'm sorry sorry i forgot to make this that's a good point none of the testing will uh, assure 100 percent bug free application because uh, again there might be some errors uh, glitches everywhere in duty environment data or uh, um, the surroundings right even when we do uh, uh, sign the agreements with clients right we will be telling 5% of uh, production bugs are allowed, acceptable. 100% uh, bug-free application is not there till now. Yeah, definitely, if, if, we get, if I get a chance, I'll definitely will give you an overview on tools uh, which I'm using here. Acceptance plan is prepared. Acceptance plan is nothing but, uh, so I have some requirements. I, if I'm a product owner, I'm having some ex uh, acceptance criteria, right? I will check whether all these acceptance criteria are, criteria are met before getting the delivery. So once that is done, um, we'll be doing the acceptance criteria finish. Any tool available free to use to generate? Oh yeah, that's what, um, uh, generate test cases reports. You can use Seleniums. Selenium or TestNG. How to get free software with any links? Just go to, I'll type guru99.com. I'm typing. So you can go to the website, you can download anything related to software testing, which is very in a, which is very simple in explanation. So you can just go through and read it, you will get all the ideas. Risk versus bugs. Yeah, bugs, <laughs> risk is like, a, uh, yeah, the risk is like uh, telling a customer that boss, you cannot uh, have this application, use this application for more than 100 users, it will go down, right? This is a risk we are telling. Bugs is like uh, there is a uh, defect in your software coding, so it needs to be fixed. So there is a difference between risk and bug. <laughs> I'll share my email ID, you can call me anytime. Uh, you can drop an email at any time. Is there any testing for wind energy forecasting? There are a lot of tools. You, know, you can Google it. You will definitely get it. Forecasting the wind energy and everything you have tools. Lot of tools, online tools. You can do it immediately. How pressure are to be handled in every day in software test? Yes, it's it's very important uh, because when there is a, a software uh, testing, people are the end or in end point of a software delivery. When there is a bug comes in production or when user gives comes back with a bug. Uh, the first people to caught, get caught is software testing people. So they need to handle, they need to know how to handle such pressures. They will, they should be very careful while providing the test closure. They will need to be very cautious while doing the testing. Yeah, we are handling more pressure because of the, we are at the end point of the delivery. Yeah, thanks to, yeah, again, thanks to Nandini and Surendra for uh, organizing this. So, uh, those things Surendran will be talking to you. You are very subjective. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really informative science. So, th thank you everyone. So, uh, I may be a little uh, elaborative and uh, taken your time, but uh, I think uh, it should it should be uh, explanative when you are giving it, uh, talking about a topic. So, thanks for the time, people. Yeah. Thanks, Surendran. Thank you, sir. It was one more wonderful interview interaction section thank, thank you, you for participants please fill the feedback forms to get your certificates it will link with uh, your certificates please fill the uh, the details clearly it will reflect in your certificates so this is my email id you can uh, drop your questions here i'll definitely try to answer your questions uh, so it was a wonderful inter informative session thank you so much Thank you, participant. So the feedback link is posted in the chat. So please fill it. Thank you all. Thank you for uh, attending the, patiently attending this session. It's a wonderful opportunity for me as well. So thank you guys. Looking forward to take more sessions like this. Thank you, thank you everyone.
Tell the close the link. If you have any doubts, please please ask. About feedback form and certificates. 